Hi, my name is Jamin Long, and welcome to this tutorial on building recommendation engines using alternating least squares, or ALS, in PySpark. This tutorial is intended for those that have some experience with supervised machine learning, understand the difference between collaborative filtering and content-based filtering, feel comfortable programming in Python, and have some experience with PySpark. If you don't have this sort of experience, some suitable courses to start with would be DataCamp's Introduction to PySpark course, their Intro to Python for Data Science course, and their Super Supervised Learning with Scikit-Learn course. We're all familiar with the output of recommendation engines where a website tells us something along the lines of, if you like that product, then you'll probably like this product. We see this type of recommendation from many businesses we interact with. What we're going to review today is one way that companies generate these recommendations. When you purchase something online, watch a movie, or even read an article, you're often given a chance to rate that item on a scale of 1 to 5 stars, a thumbs up, or some other type of rating system. Based on your feedback from these types of rating systems, companies can learn a lot about you and your preferences, and can make predictions about your tastes and offer recommendations based on ratings from users that are similar to you. Let's go over an example with movies. If we have a customer, customer A, that has watched The Dark Knight and Iron Man and gave each of those high ratings but didn't like Tangled or Finding Nemo quite as much, we can then find other users, such as customer B, who also liked The Dark Knight and Iron Man and also did not like Finding Nemo or Tangled as much. Because they have such similar tastes, if one of them gave a high rating to a movie that the other customer hasn't yet seen, we could infer that the other customer is likely to enjoy that movie as well. Based on that logic, we can offer that as a recommendation. So let's look at what ALS seeks to do at a high level and then dig a little bit deeper. Imagine we have a matrix of users and the ratings they have provided for the movies they have watched. If you'll notice, most of the matrix is empty. That's because there are far too many movies for anybody to reasonably watch. One of the major benefits of ALS is that it works really well with sparse matrices like this. What it seeks to do is leverage ratings from similar user users and fill in all of these blank cells with predictions of how these users would rate these movies if they were to watch them. The predictions with the highest values then become recommendations that can be offered to users. Let's dive a bit deeper into the actual ALS methodology. To give a simplified explanation of how the ALS algorithm generally works, suppose we have a matrix R. ALS will take that matrix and factor it into two smaller matrices U and P where, if multiplied back together, produce an approximation of the original matrix R. Don't worry about this error term for now, it's only provided here for reference. The way that ALS decides what values to put into U and P is by first filling them with random numbers, calculating the error term according to this error formula, and then alternating back and forth between matrix U and matrix P, ALS adjusts the matrices to iteratively decrease the error. It continues to alternate between them until the error term is minimized. Once this is completed, the matrices U and P are multiplied back together. The magic of ALS is that when they are multiplied back together, the blank spaces in the original matrix R are filled in. Let's see how this works on real movie data. We'll look at the Movie Lens dataset, which is a large, well-known dataset made available on grouplens.org. It contains users and their ratings for various movies that they have seen. One thing to note is that the Spark implementation of ALS requires that users and movies be provided as integer values as shown above. So you'll need to assign integer IDs to the users and the items in your dataset. Let's dive into the Spark code to build our recommendation engine. As a side note, I strongly recommend the actual Spark documentation for collaborative filtering to better understand the example we go through in this tutorial and to learn more about other scenarios where ALS would be applicable. The first thing we'll do is import the requisite packages. The regression evaluator will allow us to measure the performance of the ALS model. The train validation split and param grid builder allow us to cross-validate and fine-tune the hyperparameters of our model. 
and of course we'll want to import the ALS algorithm. From here, we'll split our data into training and test sets, and then build the ALS model specifying the user, item, and rating columns. We set cold start strategy to drop, and the non-negative argument to true because we don't want it to return any negative predictions. After this, we'll build our parameter grid using Param Grid Builder so we can fine tune our model. The hyperparameters we can tune include the rank of the U and P matrices, max iterations, which tell Spark how many times to alternate between U and P when minimizing the error, and the regularization parameter to prevent ALS from overfitting to the data. We'll set our evaluator to RMSE, tell Spark which column contains our labels, and then what we want it to name the output prediction column. Then we'll build out the cross-validator and tell it to use our ALS model, the parameter grid, and the evaluator which we just built. Once that's complete, we'll fit the model to the training data. Once it finds the best combination of parameters from our param grid, we'll have Spark take that model, which is called the best model, and fit it to our test data, and name that output predictions. We'll print out the RMSE, and the final model's parameters. For your reference, here is what all the code looks like together. When we run it on our movie lens data, we get an RMSE of 0.896. This RMSE is okay for our purposes here, and will probably be reasonably reliable in determining whether a user will like or dislike a movie. We can extract the predictions that were made on the test data, and if we compare them to the original user ratings in our data, we can see that they aren't too far off. So if we're comfortable with the performance of the model, we can then tell Spark to generate recommendations for all the users. To do this, we use the recommend for all users method and tell it to return the top 10 recommendations for each user. The output of this method is in what's called vector format and is actually difficult for human readability. So we use a function that puts those recommendations into a more readable format. Mapping the movie IDs back to their original titles and genres, we can validate that ALS works by looking at a specific user. Looking at our original data, we see that user 472 clearly likes comedies and a few dramas and romances. Knowing this, it stands to reason that this person would probably like other movies that fall into these genres. When we run this data through the ALS algorithm, it returns recommendations that do indeed fall into those categories, comedies in particular. So ALS seems to be providing recommendations that make sense and that are usable. In a nutshell, that's why companies have things like star ratings, thumbs up, likes, etc. for the products that they sell. It's how many of them generate recommendations specifically for you. ALS has a number of other applications related to a wide variety of data analysis methodologies. What you've seen here is only one of them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you feel like you understand ALS better. Thanks for watching.